the tail was really wagging the dog. Mm. And so mm. when I had children, and, I, and they were close together and it was hard, mm. I had one son and then 13 months later had twins. Wow. I had to cut back on things that didn't really serve me. Change is inedible. Like every, every success happens because you change something and, you, and you, it was a fear that was within you. Motivation only lasts for a short amount of time, but discipline is what carries you forward. I can't do this on my own, period. Are you looking at your business in terms of emotion or are you looking at your business in terms of what's practical? I still believe that America is the best country in the world. Where can kid of immigrants with no education become a physician? This is Small Business Celebration, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Welcome Visioneers to another fantastic episode here on Small Business Celebration and we're going to be talking about helping employees understand the significance of their contributions. We're also going to be talking about deciding what areas to cut back on beyond the strict cost benefit analysis. And to help with us, and also I almost forgot, we've also got the Visioneer game. And of course, that's a hoot and a holler. And to guide us through all of this is our guest, David Robertson, the owner of Nolan Thomas Construction. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Well, thank you, Michael, for having me. That's really great. And for Visioneers who don't know who you are, who are you and what is it that you do? My name is Dave uh, Robertson from Nolan Thomas Construction. I'm the president and it was founded in 1978 by me and another business partner. And uh, here we are today. We've done a lot of re residential work, but in the last mm, 30 years, probably mainly commercial work of all different kinds and sizes and shapes and Did dollar you, values. Sure, and, yeah. sure. Did you wake up one morning and said, I want to be a general contractor? Uh, no, I really didn't. Um, I, no, I, I, it was, I don't know. It, it, maybe it's just where I was supposed to be. I, and I think it is really, right. you know, just as a kid, I liked building stuff. You know, bicycles and mini bikes, and right. we and my dad and I go karted, and we I loved all that kind of building stuff, but I I, I felt like I needed an education, mm -hmm. and I went to Fresno State, right, and graduated from Fresno State, and during that time, my business partner worked at Foodland, actually it was in Fig Garden Village, and a grocery and store, I, yeah. a, a grocery store, and I worked at uh, Herb Bauer Sporting Goods, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. We came had this epiphany. It's like you know. We're having to work when other people want us to work, and that's not really working. We'd like to work mainly in the summers and on holidays and things, and then focus on our schoolwork during that time and not have to have that mixed together. Sure. So he had some skills. I had some skills growing up. My father was in trucking, and my grandfather was a carpenter, so I had learned some basic skills, and kind of similar story for him. Right. And so we decided to start this handyman business, and we did, and put up... I don't know if you call them that now, but back in the day, they called them handbills. We put them up right. all around the campus and they allowed it. I right. don't know sure. even know if they allowed that now, but we're just handyman's for hire kind of a deal. And, and we just started getting handyman work, uh, putting in a door, putting in a lock, putting in a sprinkler system. And you know, then next thing you know, we're building a carport and we're remodeling a kitchen or whatever. We're, we decided, hey, let's try this contracting thing. And uh, so we got our contractor's license and and we teamed up with this pre-manufactured home, these geodesic homes, right. and um, just started building them. And, and it just kind of took off from there. Because it's sort of a, a unique structure, I learned a lot about uh, engineering early on, some things that weren't being used in residential construction. I met some really great, uh, unique thinking people. Right. School teachers and airline pilots and philosophy people and just all kinds of interesting people that, that could understand and grasp the fact that this was a unique home with unique strengths, very strength, you know, a lot of, of, of structural integrity and a lot of uh, ability to arrange any floor plan you want because the dome structure was self-supporting. Right. So it, it needed no interior walls. So you could right. do anything you want with them. So that appealed to kind of free thinking people. And, right. uh, and there's some energy efficiency and air circulation things. And you're encompassing a, um, a, a, a volume with less surface area. So therefore you have less heating and cooling and you can have skylights everywhere in it. Right. And, and I still live in one actually um, uh, that I built in 1978. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I, so I got a big exposure to construction then. And um, 
and then I decided, you know, it takes so long to build a home, and I still build them occasionally for people that we have done um, right. commercial buildings for, but it's a year-long marriage between a husband and wife and me, right. <laughs> our company, right. and um, so commercial work was really kind of what I focused on from, from after about 10 years of doing that. Your last name is not Nolan. No, my last name is Robertson, yeah. Right, nor is it Thomas. Oh, yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right. Oh, I, I, I skipped a key, key factor. Uh, right, yeah. That sounds a little sneaky, and maybe it is. Well, it is, actually. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It, but clever, I love it, this. It is, well, kind of, but um, we named it Nolan Thomas early on because his middle name was Nolan, my middle name was Thomas. Right. It sounded like an old... Bing Crosby looking kind of guy that <laughs> smokes a, a, a pipe, you know, and sure. vacations in Palm Springs, you know, and, and right. so. And you were two college kids. And we're two college kids, you know, zit face college kids. And, and so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we would tell people, they go, oh, you work for Nolan Thomas? Your cart says Nolan. Yeah, we work for Nolan Thomas. And at that point, now we have a more corporate logo that has a red square sure, and, sure. you know and kind of has this name and stuff but then it was a signature it was nolan thomas it was a signature and and it just so people would ask us you know so you work for nolan thomas yeah we do and and which was true we got a paycheck from nolan thomas like <laughs> sure, and, and so so right it was there. kind of technically true <laughs> right? and and the ironic part about it i think is that people never rarely ask who's nolan thomas <laughs> and it, we just rolled with it and and it gave us age credibility which was but you know we we had a lot of experience though really uh, being around it both of us being around different forms of construction it wasn't like we were being nefarious about right. you know misleading people or anything but we we had a lot of knowledge and a lot of ambition you know and it gave us age credibility and now look at i'm that guy i'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, the, the, I'm the gray hair guy you know and and so um I, I am nolan thomas now yeah are you and your partner still in business together no the the uh the, the my business partner is retired and uh he's uh, living on the coast and and doing a little building, and we, we've done a couple things on the coast together. But he, he's sort of mainly retired, but he still picks away at a little bit. I think he misses it a little bit. And uh, <laughs> but I think, I mean, but I think, um, for me, I, I I think I really enjoy the process more than he ever did, really, honestly. Right. And um, and I, I just continue doing it. I still like it. How did you decide that commercial construction was the direction you wanted to go over residential? Well, it's, it's well, a lot of reasons. It's bigger normally. And when you're saying bigger, the, the facility, I mean, I mean, the projects you, are bigger? Square footage wise, number wise. Mm. I mean, but if, if you want to go just off the pure mathematics of it, mm -hmm. it's you can turn over a dollar quicker. Mm. It's okay. more, more money per day, really, okay. is sure. the bottom line. Right. And also, there's usually, you know, an architect, an engineer, mechanical engineer, structural, you know, there's a lot of professional people that have worked out a lot of the details for mm. you in advance, number one. And uh, so a little bit of a liability share, right. for sure. And plus, although we normally bring in a designer even on commercial jobs, certainly on a residential job, if we do residential, we're not doing it without a designer. Right. Because I'm not a marriage counselor. Right, That's sure. not my thing, so we need right. that person, you know. It's just more exciting, more dollars per day, really, if you look right. at it that way. And a little more straightforward, not so much emotion that's involved in a residential home, you know. And yet, you still do design build for commercial projects. We do, yeah. A lot of a lot. That's kind of our bag mainly. Okay. Usually, when there's an architect involved and they don't either have the capacity or they don't want to do the what we call the MEP, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work. Right. Yeah. You know, We'll do that, and and we'll specify materials and stuff if if that's if the architect's not involved with that. And you bring and, them here to do that, where we're doing this interview right now. Yeah, yeah, we have a library here of things to choose from, or or we'll you know cultivate those things, and and we have a pretty good skill set on that. You know, I have I, I do some steel work, steel artwork, you know, and, right. and so I kind of have an artist's heart, you know, so I think I bring that vision to it, you know, like, hey, we thought about this material, that material, or whatever, and, and I try to stay current, you know, I, I, I watch a lot of videos, actually. Right. I, I do, yeah. 
And if you have some steel artwork that needs a home, might I suggest that you call Mike Saba, a Zill Premier Agent with Watson Realty. Born and raised and never left Bakersfield, give Mike Saba a call at 661-203-8406 or reach him at MikeSaba1 at iCloud.com today. And if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something that you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and let us know. Send us a message. Who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration, just like Jalen, who asks, we're having problems providing clarity on the roles of our employees on a project to help them understand the significance of their contributions. What do you do that works? That's a great question. Uh, thank you, Jalen. Right. Whoever Jalen is, I'll right. shout out to Jalen. Sure. Here's what we've done, Jalen. I think it works. Um, well, I know it works. Um, if you don't have a job description for each person, in, and I know you don't want to do that, but you need to do that. Right. Uh, get a job description and don't make it so tight, you know, like, you know, someone could go, oh, well, putting paper in the copy machine is not in my duties, you know, that kind right, of thing. Uh, right. Don't, There's, that's don't, why they have the don't other mess with duties, my stapler, that right, kind of thing. Other duties as assigned. Is well, yeah, yeah but, but, you know, just sort of a kind of a framework of what you expect from them. Right. And, I, and if you haven't do, done that, you, you need to do that. But here's one step beyond that that works for us. And I can only relate it to my trade because that's what I do. I build buildings. And, and hopefully you can relate it to something that works in your business, whatever that is. So we have a, a variety of people that partake in the the construction process, right? There's a plumber, the electrician, the concrete guy. We self-perform some of our work. We do the finished carpentry. That's our trade. Carpentry is our trade. Anyway, so I think it's important, particularly, let's say we have the three core trades, we call them the, the, the mechanical, plumbing, electrical guys. You, you sit down with them, either on the job or in a job trailer or, or on the, you know, out on the cement somewhere, and, and you make those guys understand how they interact with the guy before them and the guys coming mm -hmm. after them. Yeah. And so, and how that relates to, to Jalen, I, I don't know what you do, it, it, it's none of my business, but, but I think it's important for a person to understand what their duty is, why it's meaningful, and what's happening around them. Your job may be more circular, there may be more things going around that person than in my world. My world's kind of linear. You know, the guy before, the guy after, the guy, you know. Sure. Right. And my, my, my thing is sort of logical and linear, knee bone connected to the leg bone. Kind right, of thing. but at the same time, you're explaining to that person that, okay, you're setting forms for the concrete, and this is important because. Right, exactly. Here's a danger area. You mm -hmm. know, here, here's a thing that's important to the next, next guy. Here's the kind of blocking. What do we need to do to help you? Mm -hmm. You know, and here's what you need to do to help the guy you know, coming behind you. And is it time consuming? Is it exhausting? Is it something you think you shouldn't have to do and it's a pain in the tush? Right. Yeah, it is. What precipitated this? Why, what happened that you said, okay, we have to start explaining to people what come, you know, why their part is so important? I think one thing I, I noticed is sort of um, a disjunctiveness on the job site, right? Mm. Um, people weren't communicating with each other. They didn't know how they related to each other. There were, it se seemed disharmonious, if that even makes, if sure. that's even a word. Right. You know, I just noticed that, like, you know, these people don't really, I don't know, if they don't feel valued. They don't feel like uh, they're, how they interact or how valuable and, 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 their point, their, their part of the process is, you know? And so we just learned early on to kind of build a different kind of job site vibe. So when we get on a job with our guys and they're, you know, the other crews from other subcontractors and stuff, you know, we just have this lecture that we're going to communicate directly. Everybody's going to have everybody's cell phone numbers. Everybody's going to have everybody's, we don't want to know what's going on. We're the conductor of the orchestra. Sure. And we got to make sure that the violin guy and the cello guy and the, uh, the you know, whatever, the, are, no, you know, are talking to each other, but they're talking to us as well. And that we're included in all this communication. But th these people not f physically on the job have to talk to each other. And, and when you get that going, you build a whole different camaraderie, a whole different kind of vibe and we get on the job and say we're going to borrow and we're going to lend and we're not going to have bad language 
and we're not going to have terrible music and we're, we're going to get along and there's no drugs and alcohol and drama and anything on this job. And if you can't do that, you won't be here. Right. And so that's the kind of lecture we get. And that's the kind of attitude we get afterward is just a more harmonious people talking and enjoying their craft more and enjoying the value that they bring to, to the entire process. And we don't have as many mistakes or bad workmanship or things that are overlooked and uh, because the one guy's taking care of the other guy or gal or whatever uh, along the way. And if you need a new roof to go with that new construction that you're building, might I suggest you call BSW Roofing Solar and Air. For two generations of more than 80 years, discover why more than 45,000 happy customers trust BSW Roofing for all their roofing, solar, and air conditioning needs. Discover the BSW Roofing difference. Call BSW Roofing at 661-327-7663. That's 661-327-ROOF or at BSW Roofing today. And Visioneers, that brings us to the Visioneer game. And if you've never played the game before, the way that it works is I have a random word generator here on my phone. I have no idea what the words are going to be that are going to be generated. And more importantly, neither does our guest. And our guest has to go through and take each of these three words and somehow associate each of the three words with their business. And Visioneers, you too can also play the Visioner game. Just pick any one of the three words that our guest gets and go ahead and put your spin on it in the comment section here on our YouTube channel and make sure you put the name of your business as well. Are you ready to play I, this I game? Don't, I don't think I'm ready, Michael. After, <laughs> yeah. after that introduction, it, it, it sounds uh, absolutely uh, dreadful and painful. Uh, well, actually, let uh, the <laughs> dreadful pain yeah, begin. begin. Let's, let's do this. So. <laughs> okay. Our first word is nest. 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 Wow. Okay. Well, I guess your business is your little nest, isn't it? Okay. It's your, it's your little nest that you created for your little babies to live in. And you know, it, it is, we do treat it like our babies. I mean, we do treat it like that. And, um, and it is a little comfort nest for us, I, I think. Very good, you got the first word right. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. how about that? <laughs> I, that was a reach for the That nest, was a reach, uh, right, exactly. Uh, well, this next word is angle. Angle, angle. Oh, Ooh. what's your angle? Yeah, what? I think my business, and I think many businesses are simple in this way. I think that my business anyway is a triangle. Mm. Find the work, bid the work, perform the work. Mm. It's really not more complicated than that. Well, congratulations. That's two out of three. Well two, done, two, you. Two for three. <laughs> okay. The, the third fun. one, I'm, I'm looking, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, oh. I'm, with great hesitation. Stadium. Stadium. Wow. I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> I, I, uh, a stadium. Uh, stadium. Uh, uh, well, we've never built a stadium. I, I, I would like like to do that. But Any I, desire to build a stadium? But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to build whatever. I, anything is challenging, but I think a business it is sort of a stadium. You are kind of on stage, right. really. And you have to get used to that. And, and, and I, I learned to do that early on. Um, uh, cause by nature, I'm not an outgoing person really. Right. I could live on an Island. I, right. I, I, I you just I, play an outgoing person I, on TV, right? I, I am an outgoing shy person, <laughs> sure. I guess. And, right. and so, um, but I think that you need to get comfortable being on stage and talking to people and. Was this something that you learned from your father? My dad was a world war two guy. My, I had an older father, right. you know, and he was a world war two guy and lived through the depression. My dad was kind of a quiet guy, but when he spoke, you really listen. The two of you restored a car or built a car together. We did, yeah. In, why was in this my so, early, why would we do that? Yeah, or, why was this such a big deal, such an important? It was a, it was a huge deal for me. Um, when when I was younger, my my dad and I were very close. As I got older and smarter and a, a, more of an education and more of a know-it-all cockiness, I think like a lot of young men and achievers do. You know, I got a little full of myself, honestly, and, and but I picked up this car, it's called a Sterling, and that a, a friend of mine had started and, and not finished, and my dad and I worked on it, and it brought us together. And I think because my dad was 
had so much hardship in his life, it was easier for my father to communicate through something, you know, instead doing, of yeah. him and I like this, it was, a, you know, that triangle again, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, there is that thing and here's him and here's me. And so we're going to, to connect in this physical and mental and engineering kind of way, you know, we, we, we connected indirectly that way. And, and we have done that before with slot cars and mini bikes and motorcycles and go-karting and stuff that we did. And, and so that was his way to reach him. And I, I kind of didn't fully understand that until the, in, until later on. So we built this car and I had a lot of help from painters and upholstery guys and stuff for things that my dad and I couldn't do. And uh, the older guys that kind of took pity on me and helped me. And it was kind of a show car and it got a lot of attention. And I was worried about it. You know, I was just worried about someone, a girl getting in it and scratching it with her high heels or it's parking it in a parking lot. And this, this car was just, I was so proud of it, but it consumed me, you know? And I was going down Blackstone Avenue by the old McDonald's. Well, I guess they've revamped it a number of times at Shields and Blackstone. And I got a ticket for doing 38 in the 35. Now, remember this car had a Volkswagen, hopped up Volkswagen engine. I mean, right. it, it couldn't probably go over 80 miles an hour, right? Sure, I mean, sure. it, it, you know, it was quick you know, because it was so light, you know, it was a fiberglass body and it looked like a Lamborghini and it was painted red like an idiot, you know, because that's a, a, I think a cop magnet right there. But right. anyway, so I got a ticket for doing 38 and I just had an epiphany and I, I went home and I put it in the LA Times and I sold the car. And I vowed to myself at that time, I will never ever be owned by anything that owns me again, ever. And this is a great segue into our next Visioneer question, which is brought to you by Mike Seva. Born, raised, never left Bakersfield. Call Mike Seva today at 661-203-8406 or reach him at MikeSeva1 at iCloud.com today. Visioneer Emilio asks, our business has grown significantly in the past few years, but it has become very taxing on us. Mm. How do you decide what areas to cut back on beyond the strict cost benefit analysis. This is ties directly into what you learned with this car. I think that's a profound question. And I, and, and I think, I, I think they already know the answer. They do. And, and only because they said, cause I, I, I actually made a copy of this because I th think that's how profound it was, Emilio, really, because you're looking at it other than just a cost benefit analysis. And that, that's what I think makes this question so profound mm. is that you already know the answer. You do. And, and, and because you're looking at it, not just purely on how much money it's generating. Mm. And, and I, I think that's a valuable thing. When I had children, this business was many, many, many times bigger. I filled up this entire 10,000 square foot building right. with people and things and movement. And we did public work and we did insurance work and we did telecom work and we did metal buildings and we did all kinds of different things, you know, and the tail was really wagging the dog. Mm. And yeah. so when I had children and I, and they were close together and it was hard, mm. I had one son and then 13 months later had twins. Wow. I had to cut back on things that didn't really serve me. But for me, it was like, okay, the insurance work, it's a hassle, uh, getting paid and negotiating with uh, adjusters and stuff. So, okay, I'm gonna get rid of that pain in the tush. And then the metal building, what didn't really fit our profile because people wanted it cheaper. You know, they wanted the cheapest thing you could possibly do. And that's not our bag. Not that we're looking for something expensive, but we're trying to provide something value. We're trying to provide value, the best thing that we could possibly provide for them. Right. It came down to, because I wanted to spend time with my children, this was like a seven day a week, 12 hour a day deal. Mm. And I go, I'm gonna wake up one day and hope that they have grandchildren so I can make it up to them. Right. I shrunk this thing down to a more manageable thing and, and focused on the things that I wanted to do that were still profitable, that I was good at, that brought me enjoyment greater than just the money. Because where I was at is 10 times the work for about 10% more money. Right. So tell me about the time when everything went wrong. My first big commercial job was in um, fashion fair. Okay. And, and it's uh, a mall. And I was building a, a, a clothing store, remodeling a clothing store. 
And at that point, I was working physically on the job every day and doing my phone work at night and right. whatever. This is before computers even, you know. I, I did have a cell phone with a Panasonic transportable, <laughs> which was probably worth more than my truck. I had a 1960 Ford pickup with three on the tree. I don't even know right. if your visionaries sure. or your sure. audience even knows what that is. But um, if you can picture, I had bought my, uh, uh, my first business partner out at that time and and I was doing this job and I, um, we had scaffolding set up in the building and, and, and as you can imagine, this building very tall. So that means the sprinkler drops are very long. Mm. We had scaffolding and I was on the scaffolding pulling it and I thought the wheels were on an extension cord but they weren't and they hit a fire sprinkler oh. line. Oh no. And so you can imagine this ugly oil oh. and algae infested water down on me and we quickly turned the fire system off of course in doing that the the fire department came right and we ended up flooding out the Edmonds jewelry store next door oh no so remember i wearing like carpenter shorts and i'm wearing old boots and a tattered shirt i have no money i'm living off of money in my ashtray and my car and I don't know if you've ever been that broke but I have and I went and talked to Mrs. Edmonds that owned Edmonds Jewelry with you know great sorrow and trepidation and uh, and she looked at me and and she had seen me there working you know and peeked in and I'd introduced myself and I said you know this is what happened it's my fault completely I owned it I said I have insurance I you know, and if I have to make payments, I mean, obviously, whatever we need to do, and, and we'll get a carpet guy cleaner here. And she goes, you know, honey, don't worry about it. I'm, I need a new carpet anyway. She sensed I was the underdog, you know. Mm -hmm. She sensed that I needed a break. And, uh, and she gave it to me. And I, I've, that was a valuable lesson for me because I've run into many under, underdogs in my life, and I've tried to help them, you know, move forward, move upward, move beyond it. It's no secret that there's a lot of business owners that are struggling right now. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the business owner to encourage them, to help them keep going? It is kind of a grab your bootstrap kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You have to be tough in this business. And that doesn't mean, that, that, toughness doesn't mean lack of kindness either. Right. I, I think kindness prevails. In fact, I have to tell you, most successful people I have met are not cruel and unkind. And I think it's not for the weak at heart. It's not. Um, it's tough. My encouragement would be, stick with it, man. I mean, just gut it out. Do whatever you can to make it work. But I think you have to analyze who you are. You know, you have to analyze who you are and what kind of stomach you have. Dave, thank you for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. If visionaries want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Uh, well, nolan-thomas.com. Okay. You know, nolan-thomas.com. They can find us that way. And uh, come by our office at 2033 North Fine Avenue here by the airport. Um, they can send me an email personally if they'd like. It's okay. Dave R at nolan-thomas.com. 559-252-1888. It's been that way for, I don't know, 45 years. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify, and leave a comment. Make sure, we're going to make sure that Dave gets all the comments, good, bad, and ugly. And I'll be right back with my final thought. Visioneers, do you have plans for your business? Might I suggest you go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog, where you can learn from our past guests on what works, what doesn't, so that you can grow a strong and profitable business. Simply go to smallbusinesscelebration.com forward slash blog today. How in the world did she do that? If you're like me, I've got a couple cats and a dog that like to play with each other and roughhouse and make all kinds of noise. And it's only suspicious when things get suddenly quiet. And about a month or so ago, that's exactly what happened. And I got up to investigate. And I went into the dining room and I saw Sasha on top of one of the cupboards where the cat treats are. Now, Sasha's my Russian blue cat. He's 14 years old. 
And I saw him lifting up the lid of one of the cat treat boxes and he had reached his paw in where he was pulling out one treat at a time and enjoying himself. Meanwhile, our kitten Max, who's six months old, was looking at him with the look, how in the world did he do that? And I started to giggle because 14 years ago, I had another cat named Xena. Yes, my warrior princess. She was a tabby. And she was doing the same thing. And she had taught this trick, this habit, for better or worse, to Sasha. She was teaching him the things that worked, the things that didn't, and how to get the things he wanted. Those cat treats. And now he was teaching the same thing to Max. Oh boy. But a couple weeks ago, I was having lunch with a couple business owners at a restaurant. And the first business owner, she was going on and on and on and on, talking about, about how busy she was and how she didn't have time for anything. To which the second business owner looked at her and said, well, you, you must be doing really well. And the first business owner goes, I am so busy, I, but I'm not making any money. Things just aren't happening. To which the second business owner asked her, well, what are you reading right now? And the first business owner said, oh, I'm so busy, I don't even have time to read anything. And the second business owner nodded and asked, well, what are you listening to in the car when you're driving around from errand to errand and meeting to meeting? And the business owner, first business owner said, oh, I have the radio turned off, I have the stereo turned off because I can't even think straight, things are so busy. And the second business owner, uh, gave her a sympathetic nod and of, of understanding when out of the corner of her eye the front door of the restaurant opened and she politely excused herself and she got up and she greeted the couple that were coming in through the door. Now as they were walking towards us and coming towards the table that was next to us I couldn't hear the whole bunch of the conversation but I did hear the end of it when they got to the table, when the second business owner turned to the couple and said, you know what, sounds great. I'll email you over the contract this afternoon. And the second business owner sat down to which the first business owner looked at her and said, how in the world did you do that? I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Dave Robertson, the owner of Nolan Thomas Construction. And I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. So what kind of music do contractors listen to? Oh my gosh, I, I think it's a wide variety of things. Remember, these are dad jokes though. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. It's not, we're not in the true no, quest, business no, no, questions no, no, yet. No, 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 no. Oh, not. I see. See, I'm already stumped. Uh, <laughs> How uh, about the carpenters? Right. Uh, the carpenters. Oh, boom, yeah. boom. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what happens when you're out on a job site and you take a worker's hard hat off? What sound do you hear inside the hard hat? I have no idea, Michael. The sound of... Uh, that was so, almost almost laughable. I mean, I almost I almost giggled, uh, but not quite. Uh, but on the lame, <laughs> it ranks high on lameness, though. You're welcome. Yeah, you're I, welcome. You you, you can post this up. In I your promise I won't use that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> Like ever, ever, yeah, ever. Yeah. But, Shall we start the interview? Uh, uh, please, <laughs> if, if we could. Uh.